Americans and for all Canadians. At 2 p.m. Atlantic time, we will observe a minute of silence in honor of Constable Heidi Stevenson and all the victims of the Nova Scotia shooting. I also want to remind everyone that at 7 p.m. Atlantic or 6 p.m. Eastern, a virtual vigil will be held to remember those who were taken from us too, too soon and support their friends and family during this particularly difficult time. I hope that many of you will join us and wear red today in a show of solidarity. Let's come together to support these communities who suffered immeasurable loss. Let's celebrate the lives of those who left us too soon. Let us remember the families, friends, loved ones whose absence will linger for years and lives. You can find more information at novascotiaremembers.com. La semaine qui se termine a été particulièrement douloureuse pour les gens de la Nouvelle-Écosse et pour oui. tous les Canadiens. Difficult for uh, people of Nova Scotia and the Canadians. At 2 p.m. Atlantic time, we will respect a, a minute of silence for uh, the victims of the shooting in Nova Scotia, including Constable Richardson. And there will be a virtual vigil at 6 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Atlantic, for those who celebrate the life of those who have left us too early. And it's a way to show to the families of those victims and all those in the community that we're with, with them. And I hope you will be numerous to be with us and wear red and sign of solidarity today. For more information, I invite you to consult the novascotiaremember.com Nova 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 website. Our government has been working with its provincial and territorial partners not only to get through this crisis, but to position our economy to rebound once it's over. And a big part of this work means listening to the concerns of Canadians and making adjustments as we go along. One thing we've heard is that small businesses are having trouble making rent because of COVID-19. If you've had to close up shop because of public health recommendations, if you don't have a lot of money coming in because people aren't spending as much these days, you may be worried about losing your office space or not having a coffee, coffee shop to reopen after this crisis. So last week, we said that we're planning on introducing the Canada Emergency Commercial Rent Assistance. And today, I can announce that we've reached agreements with all provinces and territories to lower rent by 75% for small businesses that have been strongly affected by COVID-19 for April, May and June. The government will cover 50% of that reduction with a property owner covering the rest. If you are a small business that has been strongly affected by COVID-19 and you're paying less than $50,000 per month on rent, you'll be eligible to receive this support. It will also be there for nonprofits and charitable organizations that are struggling right now. We'll also have more to say in the coming days about rent support for larger businesses. Last week, I've announced that our intent to start the emergency help for commercial rent. And today, I can confirm that we have concluded a deal with all the provinces and all the territories in order to lower by 75% the rent of small businesses that are hardly impacted by COVID-19 for the months of April, May and June. The government will cover 50% of this reduction, while the owners will cover 25%. This will be support for small businesses that are hardly touched by and impacted by COVID-19 and which monthly rent is lowered to $50,000. Organizations, uh, charities and non-profit organization will all also be admissible to the program and soon we will have other news for larger companies. Later today I will talk with the, the provincial premiers and territorial premiers and we have many things on the menu. We will continue our conversations on the reopening, the gradual reopening of the economy. Canada is a large country and it's, it's clear that the pandemic hasn't hit every region in the same way. We are a federation, so we need to adapt our reality, our response to the reality of each territory and 
and province. But the reopening of the economy, whatever the province or the territory, must be done gradually in order to for the progress that are achieved are not lost. There is a coordination work that is important that must happen across the country. We will therefore work with the governments, uh, provinces and territories in order to put in place principles and recommendations that will ensure the safety of people. But I want to be very clear regarding the reopening of the country. This won't happen one day to the next. It must happen one step at a time. If you do not want to go back to square one, everybody needs to be and continue to be vigilant and follow the experts' recommendations. Since the beginning of this crisis, we are learning from the steps taken by countries like South Korea and Japan and Singapore. But we see in other places the challenges associated with a reopening. Therefore, we must be very careful. Every place could have a different approach. So if you see in the news that another province wants to uh, relaxing its uh, rules, you must follow the directives applicable where you are living. Otherwise, there is a real risk of losing all the work that was accomplished to this day. As I said yesterday, we are witnesses of troubling scenes in the long-term care centers and our elderly residences across the country. It's an acceptable and our government will be there to help. Members of the armed forces will be deployed following re official requests from the province of Quebec and Ontario and asks that the Canadian Minister of Public Safety has accepted. The rec reconnaissance work is done in both provinces and we're looking at the needs to fill and the, the next steps. Quebecers, Ontarians and all Canadians can count on us during this crisis. We are deploying the army to give an emergency help and help provinces to get back into the driver's seat in those situations. Uh, we know it's not a long-term solution. We're offering billions of dollars to provinces to bona fide the salaries of essential workers and make sure that our elders get the care that they should have. As I said yesterday, what we're witnessing in long-term care facilities across the country is extremely troubling. It's unacceptable, and our government will be there to help the provinces. Members of the Canadian Armed Forces will be deployed after the Minister of Public Safety received and approved two formal requests from Ontario and Quebec. Reconnaissance work is underway in both provinces. We're identifying what needs to be done and mapping out next steps. As I've said many times before, we will be there for Quebecers, Ontarians and all Canadians during this crisis. We're deploying the military to provide emergency support to help provinces regain control of the situation. But we all know that this is only a short-term solution. We're also offering billions of dollars to provinces to top up the pay of essential workers and make sure that elderly Canadians get the support they deserve. Later today, I'll be meeting with the First Ministers to continue our work on supporting Canadians during this time. We're also going to talk about reopening parts of the economy. Canada is a vast country, and some regions have been hit harder than others during this pandemic. We're a federation, so we have to adapt our response to the realities and challenges of each province and territory. But I want to be clear that getting back to normal will not happen overnight. It's going to take time. It won't be as simple or as easy as flipping a switch. It'll require a lot of coordination at the national level, and our government will be there to do that work. We will be working with the provinces and territories to establish principles and guidelines to start reopening the economy safely. Over the coming weeks, you'll hear more talk about reopening, but you need to know we're not out of the woods. It's absolutely critical that everyone continues to follow local public health instructions as we move forward. For now, these instructions are the same for all Canadians. No matter where you live, you should be staying home as much as you possibly can. You should be washing your hands regularly, and you should always keep a safe distance of two meters from others. That is the only way for us to make it through 
together. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Premier ministre. On va commencer la période de questions au téléphone aujourd'hui. Opérateur, c'est à vous. Thank you. Merci. Première question, Michel Lamarche, TVA Nouvelle, à vous. Oui, bonjour. D'abord, vous entendre well, sur les... First, I'd like to hear you on those uh, commercial rents. There's already some business owners uh, saying that they will close their restaurant or their boutique. At what point would the money come in for them? And if you don't think that they're... You should have uh, or, uh, done this earlier. We know it's how it's a difficult crisis for smaller businesses, particularly restaurants, small businesses that need to close due to COVID-19. That's why we recognize that even with the salary subsidy and the fixed uh, costs of those businesses is a real challenge. That's why we will cover the rent, uh, up to 75 percent for the month of April, May and June, and we'll see after that, for small businesses that are the most hardly touched and impacted by COVID-19. Uh, we've put in place an access to credits that is easier for small companies where they will have up to $40,000 to help with those costs in the interim. And the money to support them in their rent will come as early as possible, but it will be retroactive to help them for the month of April. To follow up, Mr. Trudeau, I'd like to hear you on the long-term care center in Quebec and the CHSLDs that we call here in Quebec. We had the impression that you were standing up and making any morale or, you know, being like a, this, that are like thumbing your nose at Quebec on this and, and that the, uh, an advisor of the Premier in Quebec said that it is known and that it should, shouldn't there be more transfer, and, it, and isn't it time to have those transfer being completed? I think that all Canadians have uh, questions regarding the long-term uh, care center, the elderly uh, institutions, and it is, it is a conclusion. We need to get to conclusions on this, and every level of government will have to look at what we should have done and what we will have to do in the months and years coming. Uh, in fact, we will be part of the conversations because the federal government must be part of the solution. And we will take those conversations when they will come. For now, I think our accent is on, our focus is on getting through this current crisis, helping provinces to get back control over the situation. And we will be there to help Canadians. We will be there to help our elders going through tough times. Obviously, all Canadians are asking themselves questions about uh, the situation that has allowed so many of our elders uh, to be so incredibly vulnerable uh, to COVID-19 and related issues. Uh, we need to do better, and we will be working with the provinces on ways to move forward. Uh, we will, of course, uh, be there to have conversations about uh, increasing supports to the provinces for, uh, for health care. We've seen uh, significant needs on health care across the country. Uh, we will have those conversations uh, in the future. Right now, our focus is on making sure we're giving all the help we need during this crisis to the provinces and specifically to Canadians right across the country. Merci. Opérateur, prochaine question. Thank you. Merci. Prochaine question, Catherine Lévesque, La Presse canadienne. À vous. Oui, bonjour, M. Trudeau. Euh, je veux juste revenir sur les loyers rapidement. Euh, je veux savoir quelle sera la part des responsabilités des provinces et des territoires là, quant à ces paiements. Donc, qui va, d'où va venir l'argent dans quelle proportion et comment est-ce que ça va se faire concrètement? Pour les petites entreprises qui, font, euh, qui ont 50 000 dollars de loyer par mois ou moins, qui sont euh, très durement touchées par la COVID-19, euh, we will allow them to pay only 25% of their rent for May, April, May, and June. From the 75% that they won't pay, the, the owner will cover 25% will absorb 25%, and the federal government and the provinces will take the 50% remaining. Uh, the proportion divided between the provincial and the federal is 75% for the federal government and 25% for the provincial governments. But we will have people to explain
explain in more details uh, this announcement in the hours coming. On those bonuses for essential workers, you said that you're offering billions of dollars to the provinces. Oh, however, we know that this was a topic in your meeting with the premiers of last week. Did you come to an agreement? If not, why? What's blocking? We did a lot of progress in the last week regarding uh, with the provinces. Now, different provinces have extremely different situations. We have the reality in Quebec and in Ontario. Quebec has already act, uh, reacted. Uh, BC has already reacted in a certain fashion. So we will be there to support what they are doing and possibly increase uh, an add-on to what they are doing. And other provinces are not facing the same pandemic uh, effects or the intensity of the pandemic uh, and the crisis are, are a bit uncertain to see how they can use this help or and have it. And we work with them in the last few days to find a way to, to have a solution that works for everyone. But we're there to help and to make sure that our essential workers are, have the necessary support to continue their, their job. We uh, have been working over the past week with provinces on topping up the uh, pay for essential workers, particularly those in long-term care facilities. Uh, we recognize that uh, they are doing uh, particularly important, they're, they're always particularly important jobs, but they're particularly difficult and complex circumstances right now. Uh, but. All provinces are in slightly different situations. So a uh, number of provinces want to move forward very quickly. Others had a few questions about how it would apply in their province where the pandemic is uh, hitting less hard, where uh, budgetary constraints are different and choices are different. Uh, we are getting very close to having an agreement with all the provinces and we should be able to move forward soon. Operator, prochaine question. Thank you, merci. Next question, Laura Osmond. The Canadian Press, line open. Good morning, Prime Minister. I wanted to ask you about the cost-sharing agreement with the provinces for the rent subsidies. Um, are they sort of set in stone at this point? Are they still being negotiated? And if so, are different provinces making their own deal with the federal government, or will it be consistent across the board? Uh, those are questions better suited for the more technical briefing a little bit later, but I can tell you that uh, we have uh, worked out this agreement with the provinces, and uh, the, the program as, as it is right now is how it is going to unfold. On follow-up? Thank you. Um, some businesses are saying they have no revenue. They can't cover that 25%. And they're, now that they've shut their doors, they don't think they're going to be able to reopen them unless they get full support. Um, is there more help coming for them? Is, what do you say to those businesses? This is an extremely difficult situation for Canadians, for businesses right across the country. Uh, we recognize that uh, COVID-19 is hitting some people harder than others, some areas harder than others. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, this is something that we are grappling with. We are trying to help as many people as possible. The businesses that have no revenue and are unable to make even the 25% rent, uh, well, they still have access to that uh, $10,000 uh, of uh, forgivable loans with a total of $40,000 available uh, from the banks. Uh, that $10,000 actually represents uh, an average month's rent for a small business in this country, uh, which means a quarter of that can actually last for four months. Uh, this is aid that we've given to small businesses made available uh, without them having to indebt themselves further to try and ensure uh, that we get through this with as many of the small small businesses that are the, the motors of our economy, the principal employers across the country, get through this difficult time and come back strong afterwards. Merci. Operateur, dernière question. Thank you. Merci. Next question, Adam Huras, New Brunswick Telegraph. Line open. Thank you, Prime Minister, for taking my question. Uh, New Brunswick Premier Blaine Higgs says several of the province's employees, or sorry, employers, are struggling to get employees to agree to return to work, suggesting it's a repercussion of the Canada Emergency Response Benefit. Are there concerns that Canadians may instead want to stay home and collect benefits and not return to work? And was this thought of when the plan, plan rolled out? 
We are facing one of the largest health crises, the largest economic crisis of our lifetime. And Canadians need help. They need help paying their rent. They need help buying groceries. They need help caring for their loved ones. They've lost their paychecks. They've seen themselves uh, very, very anxious about their own health, about their parents' health, about their future. We needed to help Canadians, and we did exactly that. Helping Canadians right across the country get through this pandemic is not just about generosity, it's about making sure that we are able to do the things necessary in every home across the country to be able to keep this country safe and to make sure we have an economy that can rebuild quickly afterwards. This government will help Canadians who need help. Period. We are experiencing a situation that is unprecedented, a situation that is extremely severe in terms of public health, in terms of economic crisis, and Canadians from sea to sea need help. They need help to pay their rents, they need help to do their groceries, to take care of their children and their, or their parents. And we're in a situation where we must help people in order to allow them to take the right decision and stay home and wait for this crisis to get through. This is the priority. This is who we are in Canada. We're helping each other. We're there one for the other. That's the only way we get, we'll get through this crisis and have an economy that it will come back after. That's who we are, to be there one for the other. Uh, yes, please. Uh, Premier Higgs also says he fears that equalization payments that some provinces have come to rely on will be less lucrative in the near future as so-called have provinces struggle more than ever. Can you assure the provinces that they will not see a decline in equalization in the coming years? Yeah. Equalization uh, has a formula that has long been set, uh, and we will continue to look at ways to ensure that it's working for provinces right across the country. It's important that Canadians in every province uh, receive the services to which uh, they are entitled uh, right across the country. That's what equalization is about, and we support that principle very strongly. Bonjour, Monsieur Trudeau, Louis Blouin, Radio Canada. When you're looking at what's going on at CH and CH and uh, long-term care centers, don't you do you regret of not being generous enough with provinces for the transfer? Uh, the provinces were asking for a five percent increase. Do you regret of not being as generous as you should have? You could have been. I think we we should always think about. Uh, the uh, the place that those long term care centers could uh, the place they're they're having in their in our healthcare system and uh, we need to see if those should be part of their healthcare center and be uh, managed by the Canadian um, Health uh, Act and there's many discussions that we can have in the in the months coming. But for now, uh, my priority is to make sure that we are helping those who are suffering today and tomorrow, and that's what we will do. But the approach that you're suggesting, could it create resistance from provinces, uh, that it, it would be like uh, overlapping into their authority? But if you want to give more money, would it be uh, related to conditions to make sure that the money goes to the place that are our wish for? That's a very good question, and those are questions we will ask ourselves uh, in discussion with uh, between provinces and the federal government. Uh, we are a federation, and we're here to adapt to the reality of uh, the situation and the world in which we're living. And I know that we are united in our desire to see our citizens uh, well served and to take care of our cities and it, that's exactly what we will work on together. There will be a lot of reflection and discussion to have uh, following this pandemic. But for now, we are working together in order to make sure that we are taking care of every Canadian. Mr. Salamish of GCBC, I want to go back to uh, what you said about the federal government coordinating the reopening of provinces. Um, you talked about uh, guidelines. What sort of guidelines is your government giving the provinces, and would you ever go so far as to tell a province not to reopen something? Uh, 
I think we all understand that the gains that we have made in controlling the spread of COVID-19 uh, to this point have come because people have been very, very diligent across the country about staying home, about uh, not working unless it's essential, about not going out unless it's essential to both uh, protect essential workers and specifically to prevent our health system from getting overloaded. That has been successful. We also have seen that because of that success, we can now talk about gradually or carefully reopening economic activity in certain sectors. But we have to be very, very careful. That's why what we're working on in collaboration with the provinces is a set of principles and um, elements that should be in place and should be followed as provinces make the decisions on how and what they will reopen, when and, and if even. Uh, things like ensuring proper uh, levels of testing across the province and contact tracing. But other things like ensuring workplace safety. If people work in cubicles, if they work in a, uh, a startup with bean bags, if they work on a shop floor, if they work in a, in, a, in a food production facility, what are the measures that need to be put in place to keep them safe? These are principles saying you need to make sure that workplaces that reopen are safe in health norms. Uh, but what those actually are, what that will look like, uh, will be up to the provinces and the local jurisdictions to determine. But we need to make sure that as we look at economic reopening, we are grounding ourselves in the principles that will ensure that we don't allow for further spread or a new spike of COVID-19. And if there are cases that start to resurge, as likely will happen here and there, that we are able to manage, control and reduce them rapidly. We got a lot more details on the Nova Scotia shooting uh, this morning and the timeline with the uh, gunman. Uh, we do now know that there was a call made to 911 and the RCMP were informed that the gunman was wearing uh, a uniform, uh, RCMP uniform, as well as driving a car uh, that looked like an RCMP car. And yet there was still no emergency alert. Do you see that as a failure on the part of the RCMP? I think right now uh, we need to be there. Uh, for the people of Nova Scotia, for the families and communities that are grieving, and give them all the support we can. Part of that support needs to be answering their many, many questions. Questions about what happened during the incident, what happened to their loved ones, but also questions about uh, the police response uh, and uh, what exactly happened and what could have happened differently or better. Those questions are things that we are going to need to answer um, and we're going to work very hard uh, to ensure that those questions are answered. Ian Wood, CTV News. Prime Minister, the Nova Scotia emergency response teams in Halifax and the shootings took place in rural communities across the province. It took over 12 hours to apprehend the shooter and the RCMP have highlighted that this was a very difficult situation to be in. Um, are you confident that the RCMP is adequately resourced in rural communities? I think these are questions that people are going to be asking uh, right now in Nova Scotia, but indeed all across the country. And they are questions that uh, we don't have uh, the answers to yet. We need to understand exactly what happened, understand uh, how the response was, understand where the response could have been better with different resources or different protocols in place, and ensure that as from any uh, tragedy of this scale, uh, we learn uh, and we improve uh, to make sure that it never happens again. Uh, many of the financial aid measures that have been announced so far, whether they be personal or for business, have only been committed at this point through June. Um, but with no end of the restrictions being loosened, uh, you yourself just uh, said earlier that we're not out of the woods yet. Um, should people and businesses expect those aid measures to be extended or will they be on their own come the summer? As we've seen from countries around the world, uh, there is uh, a lot of reflection on how we reopen the economy, how it happens gradually, whether there is a scaling down of certain measures, where a certain, whether certain measures need to be continued fully for many more months. Uh, these are reflections that we will, of course, engage in with businesses, with Canadians over the coming months as we look at careful reopening, as we continue to remain closed and vigilant in other areas. 
this. The situation is ongoing, and as we have been from the very beginning, we will adjust uh, and adapt to what we see actually happening. We will be there to support Canadians in the right way, in both ensuring that we get through this health crisis and ensuring that we come back as strongly uh, in terms of the economy as we possibly can. But the only way to be able to do that is to make sure that for now and uh, for the coming weeks, we remain extremely vigilant and uh, we keep up with the social distancing rules. Brian Mullen, Global News. Prime Minister, following up on some of the previous uh, questions, some businesses say the rent relief announcement is too little too late and they've already had to close. How concerned are you that the long-term impact of this shutdown could be permanent for some sectors of the economy? We moved forward on uh, access to credit for small businesses uh, quite quickly. Uh, we tried to ensure that through the uh, Canada Emergency Response Benefit and uh, the wage subsidy, uh, that there be responses uh, to businesses and to workers uh, as quickly as possible to allow them to continue to pay for their groceries and their rent at home uh, and support their families. Uh, we know uh, certain businesses are extremely hard hit, and that's why the access to credit and the support for the rent uh, is going to be important. But we also see that this is uh, the greatest economic um, impact uh, and event of our lifetimes, and it is going to be extremely difficult. Our focus is on recognizing that, first of all, our economy and our businesses were in excellent shape before. The services that were needed, the uh, activities we had as a country uh, were going very, very well. This is an event that put us into deep freeze, put us into hibernation, as it were, and everyone had to stop and hold while we let this wave of COVID pass through. And our ability to hold well depends on many things, but including government's ability to support people, to demonstrate that we will be there to make sure that as many as possible of our businesses will be able to bounce back afterwards. Uh, we are working to try and get help out to as many people as possible. Some sectors are more hard hit than others. But we know at the end of this, people uh, will need to travel for work, for pleasure. People will need to go to restaurants. People will need to uh, become tourists again in different places uh, across the country and around the world. There are businesses that are hardest hit now who will be able to restart later. And that is our focus on trying to get through this moment of hibernation, which you know, Canadians are, are doing quite well, as, as you would imagine. And a follow-up question uh, about violence against women in rural areas. This has long been an issue looking back at the Renfrew County Massacre in 2015, which left three women dead, and this recent mass shooting. What can the federal government do to ensure the safety of women in rural, remote areas who are at risk of violence? We have uh, made significant investments over the past years in uh, shelters uh, for victims of domestic violence, of, of uh, shelters of uh, women uh, facing gender-based violence. We've moved forward with a gender-based violence strategy. Um, we are uh, looking at stronger gun control measures that will include things like red flag laws uh, that will give people the uh, capacity not just to remove guns but to prevent people from acquiring new guns uh, if there are issues around domestic violence violence. But we recognize that there is so much more to do. Uh, and that is why as a government and as Canadians, we need to continually pledge ourselves to be allies and solutions uh, in the fight against gender-based violence. Merci beaucoup. C'est ce qui m'a fait la conférence de presse aujourd'hui. Merci tout le monde.